Good morning, my name is James Aiken and I'm the minister here at St Ninian's Parish Church in Kostofen in Edinburgh. It's lovely to have this opportunity to worship you to our online worship service this morning on the 24th of April, the second Sunday of Easter. Attached to this video, there are, there's an audio service and intimations. Please have a look at them when you get the opportunity. Um, but just to say that there is no online, online service next week, which is the 1st of May, uh, but you can join us in the sanctuary at uh, 10.30 uh, every Sunday. We continue our worship as we do at all St Ninian service by sharing with one another words of peace. Peace be with you. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and may have it in all its fullness. Let us worship God singing to his praise, hymn number 424, blessed be the everlasting God, hymn 424. Let us express our joy for life in all its fullness, and let us gracefully confess before God and one another what we have done wrong this week. Let us pray. Living God, like black clouds and rumbling thunder, darkness and violent death overshadowed the end of your life. But darkness, violence and death could not defeat your message of peace and love and life. Like a new fresh spring morning, your life rose anew. Like daffodils raised their heads to the sun, your life broke out of the imprisoning walls of the tomb and the world was transformed. Just as the lives of some of your first disciples, walking on the road to Emmaus, were transformed, experiencing a dawning recognition that you and your message of love and life had not been crushed. So we pray that you will set our hearts ablaze, that we too may be nourished by your living bread and feel your living presence in our lives. As we do so, give us the confidence to confess before you those times when we have remained captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak 
and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust the power of your presence in our lives to transform us and the world and to make us new, that we and the world around us may know the joy of life abundant, given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, he who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Psalm 119 at verses 89 to 93 and 97 to 105. Eternal is thy word, O Lord, planted firm in heaven. Thy promise endures for all time, stable as the earth which thou hast fixed. This day, as ever, thy decrees stand fast, for all things serve thee. If thy law had not been my continual delight, I should have perished in all my troubles. Never will I forget thy precepts, for through them thou hast given me life. Oh, how I love the law! It is my study all day long. Thy commandments are mine for ever. Through them I am wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers, for thy instruction is my study. I have more wisdom than the old, because I have kept thy precepts. I set no foot on all in any evil path in my obedience to thy word. I do not swerve from thy decrees, for thou thyself hast been my teacher. How sweet is thy promise in my mouth, sweeter on my tongue than honey. From thy precepts I learn wisdom, therefore I hate the paths of falsehood. Thy word is a lamp to guide my feet, and a light on my path. Amen. The Gospel according to Luke at chapter 24 and verses 13 to 35. That same day, two of the disciples were on their way to a village called Emmaus, which lay about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all these happenings. As they talked and discussed it with one another, Jesus himself came up, and walked along with them, but something kept them from seeing who it was. He asked them, What is it you are debating as you walk? They halted, their faces full of gloom, and one, called Cleopas, answered, Are you the only person staying in Jerusalem not to know what has happened there in the last few days? What do you mean? Jesus said. All this about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, a prophet, powerful in speech and action before God and the whole people. How our chief priests and rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and crucified him. But we had been hoping that he was the man to liberate Israel. What is more, this is the third day since it happened, and now some women of our company have astounded us. They went early to the tomb, but failed to find his body, and returned with a story that they had seen a vision of angels who told them that he was alive. So some of our people went to the tomb and found things just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. How dull you are, Jesus answered. How slow to believe all that the prophet said. Was the Messiah not bound to suffer thus before entering upon his glory? 
Then he began with Moses and all the prophets and explained to them the passages which referred to himself in every part of the scriptures. By this time they had reached the village to which they were going, and he made as if to continue his journey. But they pressed him, Stay with us, for evening draws on and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he had sat down with them at the table, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and offered it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he vanished from their sight. They said to one another, Did we not feel our hearts on fire as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? Without a moment's delay, they set out and returned to Jerusalem. There they found that the eleven and the rest of the company had assembled and were saying, It's true, the Lord has risen. He has appeared to Simon. Then they gave their account of the events of their journey and told how he had been recognised by them at the breaking of the bread. Amen. Our second hymn this morning is hymn number 412, The Strife is O'er, hymn 412. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of her hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. The Maus Road is one of my favourite passages. Because of its beautiful narrative, and what an ending, Jesus being revealed at the breaking of the bread. From our scripture reading, we can see that stressful and disappointing road to Emmaus and that impassioned and excited journey back to Jerusalem. We have all of us taken such journeys. A journey towards home or far from the familiar. A journey to the hospital to welcome a newborn baby into the world. Or to say a final goodbye to a loved one. Journeying to a new place 
in search for prosperity and opportunity or to leave behind war and persecution. We hear many reports of Ukrainian refugees journeying away from their homes, their families, and all they have ever known. Everyone has their journeys, and the characters in our gospel are no different than us, ordinary, imperfect, struggling with their new reality. In Luke's gospel, Cleopas and his companion discussed the events in Jerusalem. They heard the stories of the woman who visited the tomb and said, Jesus is alive and risen. Yet they were not convinced. They knew their Messiah had been unjustly crucified, nailed onto the cross. They had spent two days afterwards in fear that they would be next. Now they were leaving the same day Jesus was resurrected. Here are two people walking away from Jerusalem, their hopes and dreams that Jesus would sit on the throne of David. Now their conversation was heavy with sorrow and disappointment. Their entire world had fallen apart. Then a stranger walks up to them. Now we know who this stranger is, but the travelers did not. And Jesus doesn't just say, I guys, it's me, announcing himself risen. The verse says they were kept from recognizing him. Now it could be that Jesus was stopping them from recognizing him, but I think they had lost the ability to recognize. The Greek word kreto can mean taken, held, or restrained. In their inner gloom and doom, their disbelief, they no no longer recognize Jesus. We can see that because they did not call him the Messiah, but instead called him a great prophet. Somehow the events of Good Friday had caused them to stop recognizing Jesus as the Messiah. He asks, what are you discussing together as you walk along? In response to the stranger's question, they told the story of Jesus. They must have mentioned his ministry, his teachings, and their belief in him. Then they reached the sore point of the story when the chief priests and the rulers handed him over, his show trial and his crucifixion, their hopes that he was the Messiah, the one who would redeem Israel, ruined. While walking, Jesus matched his pace to theirs and listened to what they were saying. He was patient with them. In no hurry to speak, Jesus simply took in what they spoke and were feeling. He listened to them openly to understand them best. But after listening to them, Jesus responded, How foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? Those were harsh words. How foolish you are and how slow to believe. The travelers must have been embarrassed being reprimanded by this stranger. But this stranger explains exactly what the prophets from the Old Testament were prophesying about the Messiah. Jesus explains the Old Testament, talking about Moses and the prophets expounding the scriptures. What Jesus explained to them came from the scriptures which they knew since childhood. Jewish boys would memorize the whole Old Testament 2,000 years ago, and know it by heart. And in the past, without books, memory really mattered. When I was a child, my grandfather told me, memorizing Bible verses is extremely important. The first Bible verse he encouraged me to memorize was, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. I'm so grateful to have that Bible verse because it really formed my faith. And we can see from our Old Testament reading that we should meditate on the law and its wisdom. 
In my view, memorizing is important, but it needs to have an understanding which follows it. To understand something, you need to move beyond having the words on your mind and on your lips. Understanding is an insight or an illumination. It expands your worldview and broadens your horizons. It lets you see below the surface. Memorizing the scripture is the lamp for your feet and understanding the scripture is the light for your path. The travelers had their memorized scriptures, but Jesus brought light onto their path. Jesus brought insight to the words. He would have talked about the prophecies he fulfilled, Isaiah's suffering servant, the Lamb of God, the resurrection, and the new covenant. In studying the Bible, we walk with Jesus, talk with Jesus, hear his voice, and see Jesus. We need to understand that he is the Lord of our lives and at the very heart of the scriptures. As our travelers reached their home in Emmaus, the stranger allows the disciples the opportunity to invite him to stay. Cleopas and his companion would have missed seeing the risen Jesus if they had not invited him. But this was not the first invitation. Letting the stranger walk alongside them and join their conversation came first. Then it was inviting the stranger into their home. Following that, they allowed the stranger to take the bread, give thanks, and break it for them to eat. There are three invitations in total, and inviting a stranger into their lives took faith and trust. Maybe it does take three invitations for us to recognize Jesus as the Messiah. Initially, inviting Jesus into a conversation. This would be praying and meditating on scripture. Then inviting Jesus into our home. That would be having him in our hearts and introducing him to our family and friends. Finally, inviting Jesus to host and feed us his body and blood and fill us with the Holy Spirit. Jesus reveals himself at the meal. Even after everything else, they did not recognize him until he broke bread. This is characteristic of Jesus' post-resurrection appearances, the difficulty in recognizing him. Why did it take them so long? Because the eyes of their hearts were closed. Just like the difference between memorizing and understanding, you can see, but your heart's eyes can be blind. Your physical senses fall short when comprehending the spiritual world. The action of taking and breaking the bread recalls the visual image of Jesus' actions at the Last Supper and of the crucifixion where his body was broken. The effect of the revelation brings the disciples back to that road when Jesus opened the scriptures to them and open their minds. There are moments when you finally see and you feel a sudden truth. When people see Jesus, they have this epiphany, this realization that sets their hearts aflame. Were not our hearts burning within us while he walked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? I wonder, do we feel the same? Their hearts were on fire. That's what we should be feeling when we understand the Bible and become familiar with the law. When we read, speak, and listen to the truth of God's word with passion and conviction, it feels authentic, and we feel the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The Maze Road is a story that encompasses the reality of people's experience of God through both the Old and the New Testament, and in our lives today. We have all been on this road to Emmaus, feeling disbelief, letting our negativity or weakened faith stop us from recognizing Jesus. In our scripture today, 
her two companions, even after having their minds and hearts opened during the journey, had no recognition. Only after three invitations were their eyes opened. Bear in mind that when people are grieving a loved one, they can feel distant from their faith. Death has that effect on people. It causes us to lose the meaning and purpose in our lives. And for these traveling companions, it wasn't only a loved one whom they lost, but their Messiah. Their hopes and dreams were crucified, their expectations dead. Yet we can affirm that life has meaning and that meaning is to be found in Christ. He is walking with us, but he would not force himself into our lives. It is only with sincere invitation that Jesus joins us. We need to invite Jesus to transform and share our lives. The act of inviting Jesus, walking with Jesus, praying and listening, keeps oil in our lamps and our hearts aflame. It connects us with the Holy Spirit and strengthens us for any difficult and dark journeys ahead. To give meaning in our lives when our hearts feel like they might fall into despair. We pray for the fire of the Holy Spirit to be lit inside us. Let's have, God be, let's have God's words be a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. We need to meditate on the scriptures, invite Jesus into our hearts, and recognize him as the Messiah. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 429. Alleluia, Jesus is risen, hymn 429. At this point in the service, we worship in offering something of what we have back to God through the church. St Ninian's, like all Church of Scotland congregations, is a self-financing charity. If you would like to contribute, you can easily make a regular or one-off donation directly to St Ninian's through the Church of Scotland's website, following the link below this video. We give in thankfulness, with gratitude and joy, with prayerfulness, we give in sacrifice and love. With a spirit of hopefulness, we give in commitment to God in the person of Jesus Christ our Lord. We sing our blessing, praise God from whom all blessings flow.
Let us now give thanks for her blessings and bring the needs of others into God's loving care. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, you are our Lord and Redeemer. On Good Friday, you died for the forgiveness of sins. On Easter Day, you rose again in your power and glory. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. We invite you to walk among us. We wish to join in a conversation with you. We welcome you into our homes and invite you to break bread with us. You lead us through your scriptures and provided us an understanding of your divine love. Lord, help us as we journey with our brothers and sisters in faith. Thank you that they are extensions of your love to us. We are grateful for this living community, that we are family united in love, and that we are part of the body of Christ. We are grateful for the support of those who uphold us. We pray for our families and our congregational family, that we can encourage one another in our prayers and keep alive the passion we have for our faith. We pray for our purpose here as we reach out lovingly into our community. Help us be people of peace in this world today. But it is in times like these that we remember those who experience very little peace in their lives. In this time of isolation and social distance, we pray for all those who are anxiously invading treatment, results, or appointments due to the pandemic. We pray for anxious relatives and carers who are exhausted with little rest and no and discernible end in sight. We pray for those who are managing with the new COVID rules. The, the regulations are lowered and people are stressed. Lord, equip us, your servants and disciples, to assist them in their time of need. Lord, help those who are seeking refuge and peace from conflict. We pray for those who have traveled far to avoid war. This war in Ukraine feels so close and we ask for your peace to be over your people. When evil and depravity show their face, help us have courage and strength from you. In this time of fake news, misinformation and sensationalist media, help us seek the truth in this world that is starved of your word. Eternal God, we give thanks to you for the great community of faith to which you have brought us. For those who have kept safe our scriptures, gathered our songs, built our sanctuaries, and taught us to know and trust you. Grant us the grace in our day-to-day -day life to live as faithfully as they did, and to provide as generously for our children, until you bring us with all your people into the fullness of of your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our risen, risen Lord. Amen. <laughs> People of God, go forth fed by the living word of God, Jesus Christ, in joy and in the world be filled with a spirit of holiness. Love and serve God in all that you do. Amen. We sing 427, Alleluia, Alleluia, Hearts to Heaven.
the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you all. Amen.